It's time for the B A Q A A the B A Q A. Okay, the B A Q A. What you say? The B A Q A. Welcome, Black family, Brown Ambition family. <laughs> we are here for a Brown Ambition question and answers. You have questions. We have kind of answers, but we're not your mama, your therapist, your yeah. doctor. Not even when we're your own like cousins, you know. We're not your financial advisors, so certainly we want you to take what we say with a tiny grain of salt because we don't want you to get, you know, high blood pressure. You know how our community do. So, mm-hmm. um, but we're here to just, you know, <laughs> your financial besties. <laughs> just leaning yeah, in. We don't even know y'all's names out. sometimes, so how are we supposed to give you super specific <laughs> advice? Y'all want to be anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> AKA, sue your grandma, not us. <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> So, yes, management, we have some questions for today. We've got some juicy, juicy questions. If y'all want to submit questions and have them read on our special BA Q&A episodes, go to brownambitionpodcast.com and click Ask Us okay. Anything. You can also email us at brownambitionpodcast.com or slide into the DMs on IG. We are at Brown Ambition Podcast, and you could be answered on the show. If you want to be anonymous, fine. I don't know how many of y'all are on these witness protection programs. I know. Be- just pick up a fake name. Honestly, <laughs> here's my request because it's fun for us. Yeah. Come up with some outlandish name, you know? I don't care. Yeah. You could say my name is Potato. Just something fun. Like, Sleepy you know, so we're not Seattle. like- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Silly in, in Cincinnati. Something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the last show when you switched it to Annie. So if you're anonymous, yes. you're going to be Annie, okay? Yes. All right. Annie says in all caps, please withhold my name. Fine. (laughs) I do. I think this is a great question, though. Oh, I can't wait to get into this. Hey, Mandy, she says, I'm the communications manager at a small nonprofit with about 450 ish employees. We had a team meeting with my director and the media producer regarding commercials. We all disliked the ads that we paid for and were created by a local TV station. Impulsively, I suggested that we write and produce our own commercial. Well, sis, ad copy ain't in my job description. And at 58K, I'm already a bargain. (laughs) What was I thinking? Question. I have written one commercial and now I'm being asked to write another one. How can I gracefully back out of this and explain that they need to hire an ad agency? Side note, I'm a new hire and just 90 days into a six-month probationary period. Oh, Annie. She fell into a trap. The helpful trap. Yes. The people pleasing I trap. <laughs> Annie, I'm not gonna lie, child. That's the trap. I'll be living in child. I'll be I have Uber <laughs> Eats delivered to my trap. I'm, I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> Permanent address at the trap. <laughs> That's the real, real uh, trap house for Brown. You know, and, <laughs> Brown and so Bishing I'm gonna let like, I'm gonna honestly let Mandy take the lead because that is this is not I'm like I'm listening like, wait, so what will we do, Mandy? But I will yeah. say this, this is something <laughs> this is what I learned from Dr. Green. Because she, like, this is something, I did something similar. And she said, just because you agree to something once does not mean you agree to it for a lifetime. So she, like, Mm -hmm. so that's something, like, I'm still honestly working on it because it's hard. And she's like, so if you say, I don't like onions when you're four. So Tiffany, you were banned from eating onions now that you're 42. And I'm like, no. Well, she's like, well, that's how you're navigating. So I'm saying all that to say, that's all I know because I'm in there with you, girl. Tell me what you want from Uber Eats because you and I are in there together. So Mandy, what should we do? <laughs> yeah. So this is an opportunity for a boundary. I wouldn't beat yourself up too much because in a way you needed to test out, you know, this new idea of creating an ad and doing it yourself. Test it out to see if you guys liked it. Okay. They liked it. And you're the, you're, I get it. You're 90 days into a new opportunity and you want to make a good impression. You want to be energetic and enthusiastic and have great ideas, but you also want to show people how to work with you from an early stage when you're new. Mm-hmm. And I think in the first 90 days, it's an excellent opportunity for this to be your first capital B boundary. So I think this is also important why when you are overseeing any project or any new initiative that you set in, you schedule time to debrief and you schedule time to have sort of like a look back at how the project went and then what are next steps and how are we going to spin this forward and what are we going to do? Because that gives you an opportunity to say, so I did it this time, long, long term, we need to hire this agency in order to really, you know, make this Um, make this new commitment or get the budget that we need for it. So I think you approaching it by going to your manager and saying, you know, actually, let's have a conversation about this initiative. And I'll give you a projection on what I think we need um, for this to be like a long term initiative for us. And here's how much it could cost. You Mm -hmm. could even help them out by 
I don't know, suggesting two to three agencies that you've worked on vetting or even backing that up and saying, as a next step, I will, you know, if this is part of your job description, I don't know, look into some ad agencies and come to you guys and ask for them to give proposals and come to you guys with options so that you're not you're not taking away the new initiative everyone's excited about. You all recognize you need it, but you are getting clear, you're getting clear with them that it can't just fall you know, on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And depending on how they respond to that, then you can decide, is there another conversation that needs to be had about what my duties and job responsibilities here so I can get clarity? But mm -hmm. you don't want to let this go. Because if you let this go, you're sending a message. The same mm -hmm. way my mom told me, make sure that you don't tell your boyfriend, Enrique, that you don't care about Valentine's Day when you're first dating. She's like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. You don't want to set a president. Yeah, you want him. You know what I mean? So those messages yes. early on can really set a precedent for the rest of your relationship mm -hmm. and the rest of your, you know, your job here. Yeah, no, that's good. I'm like, OK, I'm does like, that make you my notebook? I'm like, OK, does it stress you out? <laughs> said, no, no, I'm like, it's the B for boundary. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, no. All that you said, I've, you know, it's true. And it's sometimes hard. And so if you're somebody like me who has a hard time with the hard conversations. One of the things I do practice and yeah. that Dr. Green taught me is to practice saying the hard things to in easy times. Meaning like, um, uh, is there someone at your job that, you know, like this is actually the nicest person to kind of approach with this, um, to start planting that seed or just mm. even outside of this, like, you know, um, when the waiter brings you the wrong thing, practice saying, hey, this is not what I ordered. So like literally I have to build up the muscle because wherever yeah. you are, there you go. And so I'm learning to practice the hard conversations with easy people. So that way I have enough muscle built that when these hard conversations come up to, to create a boundary, you know, it's, it's not that it's easy, but I at least had a lot more practice. So that's what I honestly have been doing. You'll see me say that like even during our last, um, you know, when our, our first kind of like um, welcome back, like Tiffany podcast episode, right? That like I had to reassert the boundary, because I knew if I did it, you know, that, you know, I would, I would, I wouldn't want to say, I'm like, oh, I don't want to disappoint Mandy and everybody else and listening. I'm like, no, 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 Tiffany, you have to say the thing now because Mandy is nice. This is an easy person to pra practice the hard conversation with, you know? And face. so like, because there'll be other places that don't give a what, and I'm going to be like, okay, but I've already gotten my practice in. And so like, it's just, that's what I could suggest if you're someone like me who really gets anxious about having the hard conversations to really practice them with nice, easy people. So when it comes down to it, you know, you, you got some, you got some practice under your belt. Yeah. And I will, I'm going back to your question, remind you that you, the manager is in your title, communications manager. And as a leader and someone who's going to be overseeing strategy for that particular department, it's on you to tell them the solution for the problem. So you've told them the solution, we should do our own commercials. But mm -hmm. they and you both took that to mean we meaning me. But how easily could you have gone out and found your own ad writer, copywriter to write that mm -hmm. commercial and maybe you're overseeing it. But I think that was one of the really challenging lessons for me as a leader. And I actually just did a whole like session on this with my Mandy Moneymakers last week and really just like cathartic for me because in those early days as a leader, I thought me doing everything was how I should lead. And it's mm -hmm. how I sent the message that I'm a good leader because I can handle everything. But that's just a fast track to burnout and yes. burnout and resentment mm -hmm. and toxic work environment that you really create yourself. Because for me, the epiphany was being a good leader is necessarily doing it yourself. It's knowing what you need to do and then finding solutions for it and bringing yes. other people in and letting them help you, you know, achieve that. And it's also really important in your first 90 days at this job to like set expectations that your mm -hmm. managers will give you the resources you need to be able to do that job. So if it's a you coming to them with this proposal for, OK, we want to continue doing this. Here's the budget. I need to hire a freelance ad writer. You mm -hmm. know, here's the budget that I need to get the recording equipment, whatever, and, and give them sort of a long term budget plan. And yeah. then if they decide they want to put the resources in, then cool. But if they decide that they won't, then it's time to put that boundary down again and say, well, it's not going to be realistic for me to take on this responsibility mm -hmm. with the umpteen other responsibilities that I have. So what are we going to do? Maybe there's no yeah. commercials for a while. And then be quiet and then be silent. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said because it's true. Good leaders let good people do good work. That is like a lesson mm -hmm. that like really drove home 
you know, now that my team is much smaller and I really look around and I'm like, when you have the right people in the right place, I don't have to sweat anybody. Like I'm like, Tiffany, just take a step back. Logan got it. Rose got it. You ain't got to be in that email. If there's something in there she needs, she's going to let you know. Tam got it. You know, so. Yep. So we wish you love, Annie. <laughs> Annie Anonymous. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>